Today I'm going to answer a question from a student by the name of Dino Pappas. This question is about electromagnetic waves, and the question is, the thing that has always confused me is what happens to the EMF energy at the instant in time when both field strengths go to zero? The fields are seemingly mutually dependent. I know it works, it just seems like magic. What is it? Well, I think that what happens is uh, when we look at things in, in diagrams and drawings, and especially when we freeze time, we look at things and we see where something comes to zero and we think things have disappeared, but they really haven't. I think one example is if you see my video on operational amplifiers, there's a instant where an operational amplifier seems to have no input. And I have a video that explains, well, that's just the way operational amplifiers work. There is an input and I use a uh, demonstration using two people in a yardstick to show how one mutually affects the other to keep the middle at the same point. So it looks like nothing's happening at the middle, but it's actually two people interacting to keep that at the middle. And waves kind of do the same thing. Think about a surface wave in the ocean. So we have a wave in the ocean and this wave is moving and sometimes it's at a high point at a peak and sometimes it's at a trough and sometimes it's in the middle. So at the peak we have gravity trying to push it down and at the trough we have hydrostatic energy trying to push it up. And what got it there in the first place? Well, we have kinetic energy that pushed it up and then it gets to a place where it runs out of kinetic energy and now it has potential energy and then gravity pulls it back down. Here's the same thing. Kinetic energy pushed it down and now we have hydrostatic energy pushing up. That's potential energy that pushes it back up. But what about in the middle? Well, it's a little bit hard to illustrate uh, in a static drawing like this, but remember that this wave is moving and if we look at this particle of water that's right here, we find that that particle of water is going up and down and up and down. Actually, it's kind of going around in little circles. So it's gaining potential energy, then it converts that kinetic energy when it's moving, then it gets back up here, stops moving, now it has potential energy, and then it moves again and converts that back to kinetic energy. So it keeps going back and forth and back and forth between potential energy and kinetic energy. And so when it's at the zero point, it's not out of energy. It's just now that it has all kinetic energy. It's moving. And when it gets up here, it's run out of kinetic energy. And now it has potential energy. So it's always making that trade-off. So it's, when it's at the zero point, it's not out of energy. It's just at the median between the two points of the highest potential energy and has its greatest kinetic energy at that point. So it's always going up and down. So what happens when it's at zero? Well, we look at it statically like this, it looks like, well, it's lost its energy. No, it's lost all of its potential energy because it's neither all the way down or all the way up, it's in the middle, but now it has all of its kinetic energy because now it's moving. So we have one kind of energy then another kind of energy. Then in electromagnetic waves, it's going to be something similar. I'm not sure if I can really relate it exactly the same way. And like I say, I really don't like the diagrams that show electromagnetic waves looking like surface waves because that's not what they look like. That's a graph of how the energy is uh, contained in the wave. But at one point, we have the polarity one way at the maximum of one kind of energy. And as it's flipping, it's changing to another kind of energy. Is it kinetic energy and then potential energy? really don't know because of the nature of electromagnetic energy it's um it's it's what it is but it's changing back and forth so when they're at the zero point it's not gone it's just at the maximum point where it's changing to the other kind of energy when i talk about how we generate electromagnetic waves i use the idea that we have water in a bathtub and if we start you know, maybe put a board on the water here and give it a push down, it's going to push water this way and it's going to cause that water to go up. And then as it's moving this way, we get our maximum kinetic energy, but as it pushes up, we get our maximum potential energy. And then we get that going back and forth and back and forth. Potential energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, kinetic energy. So it's not zero energy here, it's just a different kind of energy. And if we take that analogy to our antenna, where we have electrons streaming back and forth, very much like the water sloshing in that tub. So we have the electrons bunching up this way, then bunching up that way, then bunching up this way, then bunching up that way. Potential energy, kinetic energy. Potential energy, kinetic energy. Here we really do have potential energy and kinetic energy 
trading off back and forth. And when it gets in the middle, it's not out of energy. It just has all kinetic energy because it's moving. When it gets to the end, it stops moving. It has all potential energy and it wants to keep moving back and forth. And when we get to the electromagnetic wave where we have a strong magnetic field and then it collapses, and of course we have an electric field that's happening at the same time, the electric and magnetic fields build. And now we have our maximum potential energy, if you will. And when they're collapsing, we have our maximum kinetic energy, if you will. Uh, are they really potential and kinetic energy? Uh, you be the judge. I've never really looked deep enough into that to see if we can make that analogy, but it is the same kind of thing. So when they're at zero, they're in the maximum transition. So think of that as maximum kinetic energy. And then when it's strongest field, it's maximum potential energy. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.